You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. Hi, I'm Megan Brady. And I'm Jennifer Hopton, and you're listening to Galloping Getaways for Thursday, May 23rd. However, going forward, we will be on Horses in the Morning every fourth Thursday of the month and cover everything equestrian travel, brought to you by the Equestrian Travel Association. Ride away with us on this special monthly equestrian travel episode, brought to you by the Equestrian Travel Association. This month, we will be discussing the Equestrian Travel Association, its mission, and the business members that offer equestrian travel experiences of a lifetime. We will be featuring dream destinations, fun stories from past trips, and we'll be chatting with Sandy Kohling and Dr. Marcella Becker about their unique equestrian adventure in Germany. To start off our first episode, we have someone that many of you may know joining us, Glenn from Horses in the Morning. Welcome. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for doing this show for us every month. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we're super excited. You know, I've been trying to do it. We've been doing this 16 years on the Horse Radio Network, and I've always wanted a travel show. And so when we met you guys, it was like, okay, this is just perfect. This will work out great. <laughs> Match made in heaven. And you'll have you'll be part of Horses in the Morning, but you're also going to have your own podcast feed, which means that people can just subscribe and listen to just your episodes, or they can listen through Horses in the Morning, either one. What is your podcast called, officially? Galloping Getaways. Galloping Getaways. So look in your podcast player for Galloping Getaways, and you'll find just their episodes if you want to tune in to just those. But let's find out a little bit about Equestrian Travel Association. So, Jennifer, what is it? The Equestrian Travel Association is a group that looks to unify and help the equestrian travel industry by having business members join. The business members are groups and farms that promote and also offer equestrian excursions worldwide. We try to set through the Equestrian Travel Association a standard of conduct for horse care, as well as guest care, I guess you could call it, or guest amenities, and help these different businesses to take proper care of their horses by providing education where necessary, guidance, and also just bringing these businesses together to work as one, since they're all in the same industry, they can come together and help each other so that we can expand on this industry. And so the Equestrian Travel Association would love to bring these businesses together for those purposes. And, and you vet them, because that is one of the things when you're taking an equestrian trip, you're, the last thing you want to do is get there and see the horses are skinny and, you know, it's, it's not a good yes. situation because that just makes us horse people feel Awful, right? Awful. Yes. Yeah, and, and we we don't want to support it either. But you know, you're kind of there. You're stuck. So mm -hmm. if with you vetting it, then we know we're going to have a good experience as far as horse care is concerned. Yeah, that's one of our missions is to really establish the best practices and operating standards for the equestrian travel industry as a whole. And so our members join because they uphold to those standards of care and customer service. And then in, we promote them to consumers because then we vet them clearly to know that they are, you know, consumers will be able to find the horses in very good condition and they will have a great experience themselves. And it's worldwide, right, Megan? Correct. Yes. So it's not just the United States. Nope. We represent businesses from all around the world. And you guys just came out with a brand new, very lovely website, by the way. <laughs> People can find it at rideeta.com. And it is so easy to get around. If you want to do an equestrian trip, you put in your country and your riding level. I love that you added riding ability level, by the way. Yes, uh, that's important. <laughs> and then the type of experience, too. You have about 20 different types of experience, everything from cattle drives to yoga on horseback. Yep. I mean, it's a little bit of everything. You really did a good job with this. And I know yeah. it was a little hassle to get here, but <laughs> I just yes. thought you did do a good yes. job. Yeah, it's the nice part, too, is in those business profiles, when you do find a business that meets your search criteria, you can look at their individual profile, which has their contact information. But it also offers, which I think is great, 
other activities outside of maybe equestrian activities? If they have a pool, do they have hiking? Things for maybe family members that are coming with you on the trip, but are not necessarily equestrians. I know for my family, we have some of those. I'm probably the main equestrian. My husband, if I pull him in, will be an equestrian. But my parents, if they were to come, or my sister and brother-in-law, they are not equestrians. So something facility that offers other amenities for those guests that are not horse focused or horse crazy like the rest of us. A lot of that is outlined on the business profiles as well. So it really gives a great overview. As a horse husband, I appreciate that. <laughs> I will get roped into the one ride and then I'm out. You know, then you're that's, out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's so, fair. It absolutely is. <laughs> I think this is terrific. I'm so glad that you guys are doing this. It's much needed in the horse world. And I'm glad yeah. you're part of the part of the horses in the morning. I understand that you're gonna highlight a couple of uh, one or two of these different riding locations and things, you know, vacations that people can do. I also am very excited. You're gonna do a recipe at the end of every show about the place we talked about, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really fun to learn about local cuisines and find out why not feature a recipe from the area we're talking about. Perfect. Well, I'm going to yeah. bail out. You guys, good luck with the show. I'm so excited to listen to it. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. So Megan, as you know, I joined as your partner with the Equestrian Travel Association just over the last year. We have a new LLC, but I know you started the Equestrian Travel Association over a decade ago. Hard to believe that a whole decade has gone believe. by. Yes, very hard to <laughs> believe and painful I, <laughs> to think about. I'm there with you. Yeah, yeah. But tell everyone and our listeners a little bit about the ETA history, what brought you to creating the ETA and its mission. I'm an equine body worker. At the time, I was just launching that business really full time. And I was traveling a lot throughout the United States. I was actually living in an RV for three years, <laughs> traveling all over the country and networking and getting different certifications and working. And I, it was great, but I wasn't riding. I didn't have my own horse at the time and I wasn't riding as much. So I was going out and taking, you know, these day excursions. I, scheduled things for dude ranches and just so I could get as much riding time as as possible. And I wanted to also experience different types of riding. So I did vaulting lessons. I did cattle drives. I did mm -hmm. endurance rides. But and I had some great, fabulous experiences. But also I would show up to some places and I was really disheartened by the shape of the horses, horses not having access to water. And it just really started to make me think about there's no, as a consumer, and especially whether you're a horsey or not, you want to be able to go to these places that you're investing your time and money in and knowing that the horse, horse care is up to standard and that you are going to get exceptional customer service. So that's where it kind of began in my mind. The mission of the ETA is to really w raise awareness of the equestrian travel industry as a whole and to establish best practices within the industry while increasing the quality of horse care training and the facilities themselves. I really wanted to raise the bar on the customer service, customer service part as well and represent businesses that abide by those set of standards, both on the customer care service side of things and the horse care. So that's how it all got started. <laughs> well, that's great. And I know when you had shared the background on the ETA with me, when you and I got together, I think for dinner mm -hmm. and drinks over a year ago, I just thought mm -hmm. what a fabulous idea because you really don't know what you're getting into. Sometimes I actually had a thought the other day that it's almost analogous to a dating app or dating online, right? Yeah, absolutely. You don't know if the picture is really the picture. Right. Until <laughs> um, you show up. The difference being, of course, for travel, right. you're unfortunately making the financial and the time commitment ahead of actually finding yes. out if the picture is accurate or not. Whereas, of course, with the dating app, maybe you're, you luck out and you're not financially committed before right. you're like, uh-oh, <laughs> yeah. type of thing. But, and certainly, you know, it's funny because with my background in well, finance, but also mm -hmm. managing some large hotel accounts and stuff. I think what's sort of missing in the equestrian travel industry is the fact that the employees really are the horses, right? And you hear Absolutely. all of these Absolutely. 
things about proper, you know, taking care of your employees. I know I certainly did when I worked in corporate America and at the hotels, taking care of your employees at all levels, but it's, it's sort of overlooked. And I love that the ETA brings it to the forefront that the horses are the employees here. They're the ones that are making the trip. And yes, you have your guide and certainly we're not discounting them, but the horses are truly the ones that are doing a lot of the work. And they're the ones who are experiencing, they're your partner during that that vacation, that trip. And so we need to really take care of them to the best of our abilities. And the thing that I really love about our organization is the education piece that we provide because not all countries have the resources that we do here in the United States or even Europe. So the fact that we can provide those resources to those places and provide education is just, I'm thrilled. I'm just thrilled that we're able to do that. And I'm so glad that we're partners doing this together. Of course, it is incredibly exciting. And I know that you and I have talked about some of the different business that have reached out and some of them that are in countries, as you said, that do not have access to the resources, Mm -hmm. but are really seeking out what the ETA can help them with so that they can do what's best for their horses. They truly care about them. They understand the importance of the horse in their business and really any guidance that they can get. I remember one gentleman in particular, I think over in Laos that had reached out and was just talking about how much he loved his horses and his operation was very small, but he wanted to be a part of this movement, which is really cool. Yes. Really, which is really exciting. Yes. And I know just from knowing you that you've also experienced some equestrian travel yourselves, but even before we met. So I'd love to hear about that experience. Yes. So I went, a friend of mine had a wild idea and actually that is coming up on 10 years ago this summer, which is mind blown. And I'm very scared thinking about that. (laughs) But she reached out and said, you know, I've always wanted to have a riding vacation. I think at that time I had three horses here. And, but as we know, when you own your own horses, you love them, but it's not always a vacation, right? There's stalls to clean and things like that. So she had found a wonderful place over in Segovia, Spain, outside of the Grados Mountains. And it was a six-day riding trip. I believe it was about six hours of riding a day with breaks in between. And Mm -hmm. the first half of the trip was actually spent riding. We would leave from the same location, this lovely farm at the base of the Grados Mountains. And we'd ride out on the trails and they would have actually a support staff that would come and drive ahead of us and set up these charcuterie boards and wine and just fabulous food along the way. And you'd stop by the side of the river or by these old stone buildings and you'd have a little brunch or you'd have lunch and the horses would rest and nap under the trees. And that was probably, I think, the first three days. And the second three days, we actually went more into Segovia and there was a jumper barn and the gentleman that owned it really was excited to have his show jumpers go out on Mm -hmm. these trails. Great fitness for them. And so we were riding these show jumpers and that half of the trip was actually town to town. And so we would be galloping, yeah, galloping across the plains of Spain and just, it was just, magical. I, it almost seems unreal. It was so incredible. And so we spent three days, as I said, going from town to town. So we stayed in different hotels. One time it was an old monastery. We'd put our horses up at these small little stone farms and they'd Mm -hmm. stay there for the night. But we also got to engage a lot with the horses and we'd tack and untack, cool them off, do things like that. So you really created albeit for a short time, a partnership with those horses. And I met some wonderful people. There were people there from Germany, from England, just all over the place. And we would sort of compare stories and things like that. But I do remember, I have to say, I'll never forget, one of the women from England was wearing one of those 
safety vests Mm -hmm. and she had borrowed it from a friend. And so she had it plugged into our saddle and we're riding along. She was very tiny, very petite and we're galloping across and there were 12 horses in a row. So there was Creek that all the horses were jumping over, but you couldn't Mm -hmm. really see it till you were right at it. Mm -hmm. So no one's calling out jump and we're towards the back and her horse just took off and leapt over this thing and it unseated her. And she was so adamant that she was not coming off this horse and have the vest deploy (laughs) because of the cost of (laughs) refilling the cartridge. She's hanging on the side of this horse, like a spider monkey. And she's (laughs) everyone's, I think we've all been there. (laughs) (laughs) It was just hysterical. She's hanging on the side for the love of, I mean, just, she was not coming off and her friend comes galloping by, brings her horse to a halt and then just whoop, puts her right back up in the saddle and off we go again. But we were like, you should have just, you know, dropped to the ground. She said, I am not having this vest deploy (laughs) under any circumstances. This will not be happening. And it was just, we were laughing to the point of tears because she was hanging on. She was fine and nobody was hurt, of course, but but she had a grip (laughs) you've never seen. That sounds like a fabulous vacation. Absolutely. And I will have to tell you that I have lots of stories about people falling off throughout my adventures that I've taken, including myself. So that's for a later date, because right now we have to get into our guests. <laughs> yes, definitely. We would like to introduce our guests, Sandy Colling and Dr. Marcella Becker. We picked these guests because they have a trip that offers both, of course, the travel component and an educational component. Sandy is the owner of Euro Equestrian Travel, and Dr. Marcella Becker provides education in equine and rider dynamics, specializing in cultivating a balanced and effective seat, which I know we can all improve our seat. Sandy has put together a guided trip to Germany for riders and non-riders alike to learn and experience Germany's rich equestrian heritage while also having the opportunity to participate in a two-day rider transformation boot camp. Sandy, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, your Euro equestrian travel, and what led you to put this all together, this vacation and boot camp? First of all, a little bit about my background. So I'm originally from Germany, lived in America, I've been living in America for many years now. And horse gal at heart, always have been, as you know, Mm -hmm. you know, we're horse people, you know, we're always horse people. And I absolutely love to travel. And people were always asking me questions about travel to Europe, travel to Germany, you know, where can I ride? Where, you know, what's horse heavy? What about the equestrian culture and tradition? And it really started with Germany because Germany is so horse heavy, right? So I was chatting actually with Marcella And we were knocking it back and forth with a friend. She said that, you know, Germany is so horse heavy. Let's do this. So I really combined my passion of riding horses, Mm -hmm. travel, culture, tradition, and of course, language. Because, you know, my background is also in interpretation and translation. And so I put together this vacation and this trip and wanted to have people get community, have community, have connection, you know, do what they love to do, spend time around the horse world, but also get to travel in a group of like-minded people. Awesome. That's great. I hope I get to experience one day. (laughs) Marcella, tell us a little bit about your background in equine and rider dynamics. Okay. Well, it's, it's kind of, I'm, even if Germany is horse heavy, I'm not from a horse heavy family. So I guess I got a relatively late start into riding and it, it was not the, the easiest either, you know, stiff horses in a riding school and yelling instructor and a very untalented Marcella. So um, <laughs> not the easiest start. And I think the, the first real introduction to much more horse friendly lessons was actually when I was in Oregon studying political science later on teaching it. And then I hit upon a classical trainer. And for me, that was really the thing where I said, okay, I think I found my Rome. Later on, I found out, found out there are many Romes and not just one Rome, but mine was found. And that was classical dressage. 
And so besides my studies and then my teaching at the university, I really embarked on more intensive learning and some teaching of writing on the sound, on the side. And then later, when I was back in Germany, it was a gradual process until I ended up teaching classical dressage full time. And I guess because of my late start, um, seat has always been an issue and sometimes a struggle for me. And I also found that a lot of uh, writers and teachers that had started early, if I asked them, so how did you do that? I just kind of got a funny look. And so I guess that was one of the reasons why seat issues became much more central to me. And also from the experience that, oh, let's say if we're working on straightness issues with horses, if we're sitting crooked, how can we go from there? And from that, my focus on seat really took off and then the vision of this writing simulator studio. And now that vision is reality. And it's been proven to be a super effective teaching tool. I have a writing simulator that is purely kinesthetic. And that is a way that helps you to really activate your, I call it your body brain or your spinal brain. And it leaves out, you know, your your thinking brain, which... As much as I like to think about things, sometimes it's just not useful when you're on the horse. You need to feel <laughs> and you need to just do. So, yes. so this is probably why I got into this thing. And from that, you know, this idea with the writer boot camp came to pass to give a chance to people from the U.S., to get the benefits of my studio. I know Megan and I are on the dressage journey as well. And certainly yeah. thinking about my seat, I sometimes feel like a used car balloon that's flailing around one of those big tubes <laughs> and everything's flapping and flailing all over the place. So I'm very inspired by what you just walked us through oh, and your background in it. And certainly even... Even those that maybe are not so much a used car balloon can always, we can always learn more. I think I've found Absolutely. over the last few years, I continue to learn more and more information just about the horse and the rider. So it's such a great opportunity. Well, and, and riding, no matter which direction you are using, it's a lifelong quest. Mm -hmm. And seat is a lifelong quest. And it's this constant challenge of figuring out flexibility versus stability. We need both. Mm -hmm. But yep. where, when, what, how, in which combination, <laughs> that's very much depending on the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Marcella, can you expand upon the Rider Transformation Boot Camp and what participants <clears throat> can expect from the experience in the two days? Happy to do so. <laughs> we offer in July this two-day boot camp experience and further down the road, we're also planning a four-day thing, which is then quite intensive. Mm -hmm. So the first day is, is always somewhat experiential. I have also a flex chair besides the riding simulator. And that's in a way a swivel chair, not too swivelly, yeah. <laughs> connected to a screen. <laughs> so, so that way you can actually also work with um, visual input Mm -hmm. I found that important and it actually helps the people coming to the studio to get into the playfulness office. They will have each twice a sit then on my writing simulator. And because it's kinesthetic, it's actually doing a lot by itself. I mean, I coach mm -hmm. them and I ask questions and we we work on, you know, basic gates and all of that. Mm -hmm. But the interesting part is that when people in the courses get on Joker's Pluto the second time in the afternoon, some of the issues that we were detecting in the morning are already taken care of. Example, I had one young woman, she had a broken chin, shin years ago. And when she sat on the horse, she was completely crooked. And that was a leftover from this thing. Mm -hmm. So we worked a few things. And in the afternoon, she sat on Joker's Pluto. And I'm like, hey, do you notice you're quite in the middle? And her legs were more relaxed. So because this thing, this simulator, is not a high-tech electronic thing, but it works with springs, it actually vibrates some of the tensions that all of us have. You know, if you live, mm -hmm. you have some tension. 
it shakes those off. And my understanding is there's a second instructor as well, Stephanie Diaz. Could you tell us a little bit about her? Yes. And I am so happy that Steffi and I are doing this together because she brings, I come from the classical dressage background and studying seat, and she brings in stuff with her as a movement trainer Mm -hmm. and also as a body worker. So with that, we really have a great offering. She studied herself with a teacher who brings together elements from Qigong, Shaolin movement, Tai Chi, Falkenkreis, and other elements. So it's all about bringing our bodies into a way of moving harmoniously and sustainably in your everyday life and in your writing. So Sandy, what are some other specific cultural or historical sites related to the equestrian world that the participants of your vacation will visit during their trip? So one of the ones that I'm super excited about is the oldest state stud farm in Germany, in Marbach. And it's located in, of course, the area that we will be in, in Schwabenland, in the Swabian <laughs> Air region, in Baden-Württemberg is the state. And the state stud farm is about 500 years old and wow. it is really well known for its breeding of, believe it or not, Arabians, Arabs. Mm -hmm. The Black Forest (laughs) draft, the semi-draft horse, which is also not as well known here in America. And, of course, Haflinger. We all love Haflinger, (gasps) I have a Haflinger very (laughs) close to my heart. He is the most wonderful little animal. Right? (laughs) But so it's it's really, it's, it's just an... Just even the location is exquisite. But when you really step into that heritage, that equestrian heritage of 500 years old of history. So what our visitors are going to really experience is a Prosecco, because we can't start tour of Maba without not. Prosecco. <laughs> this is very <laughs> true. <laughs> Welcome toast in the historical carriage room. And awesome. so there's going to be a tour of Mabach, of the State Stud Farm. And then mm-hmm. there's also a museum, which, you know, participants can explore. And the history is just so, it's just so beautiful. And it's so in-depth. And it's gone through all these centuries, right? 500 centuries. Mm-hmm. And a lot of research and education has done to really preserve and promoting the, tr- the traditions of Mabach and of, you know, equestrian traditions in Germany. There's a lot of people that actually even go that aren't really into horses because it's just such a beautiful. Yeah, it has so much history. Exactly. That's awesome. That sounds so that great. One of the things. Beautiful then, old buildings. Yeah. yeah. And then we're also going to go to the Stuttgarter Reit- und Fahrverein, which is basically the Stuttgart. Stuttgart is the town, the riding club. And there we'll be able to experience a true German riding club that are so different to here in America. And there's two riding arenas. There's oftentimes, you know, one or two lunging arenas. And so we're going to get a tour of the arena, of the, the property, the Verein, the club. And, you know, with some explanations. And what I love is when you're in an arena, I grew up, you know, riding and you're in an arena and there's a group lesson with like, you know, eight riders. And then there's two people lunging in the middle and there's two mm-hmm. private riders and everything works. Right. So it's yep. so different to here in America. And one of the highlights, I think, is and it just brings back childhood memories of. So <laughs> you have what's called the Reiter Klause which is basically a pub slash cafe slash restaurant. Mm-hmm. And it's built at the end of the arena, the indoor, the covered, <gasps> in, covered arena, and it has glass. And so you have your beer or your tea or your coffee yep. or whatever you want. Love it. So we're going to actually be watching some vaulting. Oh, very um, cool. Which is going yeah. on. So that's yeah. one of the things. And another thing, again, with the Prosecco welcome, it's a, pri- it's a private shopping tour at Löstau. And Löstau is kind of think Dover on steroids. It's, mm-hmm. um, we're going to have a private shopping tour and they're also going to give us a little bit of, you know, history of the different of the different big German equestrian brands. So, you know, those are some of the highlights that were equestrian related that we're going to be experiencing. Oh, that's awesome. I know when I visited Germany, that was one of my favorite things just to be in the viewing area, drinking my, my <laughs> beer and watching everyone else train and being just awe of that. So that's awesome. 
Mm-hmm. What other activities or experiences can <clears throat> vacationers expect, like specific areas of Germany or cuisine? I know we talked about Prosecco. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes. So we're keeping it to Baden-Württemberg, which is, you know, the state. You know, Germany has states kind of like a little bit like America. So mm-hmm. we're keeping it just because, although, you know, the dimensions are nowhere near as big as in America, but just to kind of keep it because we don't want to spend all the time in the car. So mm-hmm. we're going to have our boot camp and then we're going to see equestrian stuff. But we're also going to go to several different castles and we're going to go to Hohenzollern, which on a side note, when we go shopping at Lustau, there's a view to the castle. But we're also going to go to the castle. It's um, really one of Germany's most imposing castles. It's in the neo-Gothic style, has a lot of towers and it's just absolutely beautiful. Still in the same family, which, you know. Since I think a thousand years, it's in a private, in a, in, in private hands. So that's, you know, thousand wow. years, private hands, a little different, right? <laughs> so we're going to do that. <laughs> we're going to go to another castle called Liechtenstein, completely different. It's often called the fairy tale castle of Baden Württemberg. It's atop a rocky cliff, 19th century, but it's absolutely <gasps> gorgeous. It has wow. an old part to it too, very, very old. That's kind of just in ruins that we're going to go visit. We're going to go to several different towns that are just beautiful. One, Schwäbisch Hall, Tübingen, Esslingen. We're going to do walking tours of the old town, cobblestones, the beautiful half-timbered houses that they really create a storybook atmosphere. I know that sounds mm-hmm. cliche, but it's just so beautiful. And the food is just absolutely delicious. So we're also going to be going to a couple very traditional of the area restaurants. And so there's going to literally be something for everybody and horses, tradition, culture. And what I love, it's going to be really in a community of like-minded people who can just really enjoy and connect and get to know each other. Oh, that sounds so awesome. So awesome. Yeah, it truly does. And I think I want to look further into viewing areas and <laughs> yes, here <laughs> yes. in the U.S. I think that's something I absolutely can get behind. Not having an indoor myself, but maybe finding one, Megan, we could start at your place. Yes. Yes. <laughs> get that. Get that, get that working. That's right. Well, yep. Sandy and Marcella, we really appreciate your time and all the information you provided. The trip sounds absolutely wonderful. I personally think I want to go as well. Just the activities, the history, the incorporation of the horse and then the boot camp, which Marcella, as you had said, Everyone can, we all continue to work on our seat, on our riding, you know, using proprioception to bring attention to the areas where we struggle a bit and can work from there. And I just think it sounds like an absolutely outstanding trip Mm -hmm. for anyone that wants to go. It is incredibly exciting. If people want to take this vacation, how do people find you? How do they book a trip? So they can visit the website at EuroEquestrianTravel.com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on that, there's where it says, I'm ready to learn more. They can either book a 15-minute Zoom call just with questions, or mm-hmm. they can send an email to team at EuroEquestrianTravel.com. And I also have a phone number if you want that. And yeah, ask questions and that's it. Hop on. It is inaugural pricing because it's our first trip of many to come, we hope. And so it's inaugural pricing because we just wanted to give an incentive to those who are, yeah, the inaugural Great. participants. That's awesome. <laughs> Excellent. And you can also find it on our website at the rideeta.com because we are featuring your trip on our website. So people can also follow, find you through there as well. Well, it was so wonderful to have Sandy and Marcella on, and I'm so looking forward to seeing how their trip goes and to hear more back from their participants. And it's so nice that it's so rare that we get to see both an educational piece with travel. So I think what they're doing is such a wonderful job. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just looked it up and it's $3,800 for the whole trip, eight days. Obviously that does not include airfare, but that's all inclusive. That actually includes some meals. So I think that is a fabulous price for what they're offering. I agree. Nice to have a, an equestrian vacation that's affordable. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And then the education just is a little, you can take home what you've learned um, Mm -hmm. and apply it to your own riding at home, which is great. (laughs) Which we all can use, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Now it's time to take out your culinary passport and join us for our Gourmet Globetrotter segment with our recipe of the month. So at the end of each episode, we are going to feature a recipe from that area that we're talking about. So today, Sandy, we would love for you to share your favorite recipe from Germany and a little bit about why this is your favorite. So, and it's not just from Germany, it's actually from the region that we'll be traveling to from Schwaben. Oh, even better. Yeah. And it's Great Käsespätzle, Käsespätzle mit Salat. And it is honestly, even though I'm not anywhere near from that region, I'm from a completely different region, but it still has always been one of my favorites because who doesn't like cheese, right? And who doesn't like noodles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, mac and cheese, absolutely. <laughs> and the vegetarian that I, you know, was from 42 years, actually, it was like one of my favorite things to eat. I do eat meat now, but it doesn't, you know, include meat. So honestly, it's just absolutely delicious. Wonderful. Awesome. So tell us a little bit what's in it. So Käse Spätzle is basically Käse is cheese and Spätzle are a certain type of noodle. They're not okay. pasta. They're, you know, they're noodle and you can buy them pre-packed, but they're super easy to make. All you need is flour, mineral water, salt, and you make the dough. And then there's a Käse Press, Spätzle Press. So it's basically like a press. It looks like a massive garlic, <laughs> garlic <laughs> press, actually just big and you squeeze yep. it through. <laughs> Or you can take it from a wooden cutting board and just slice it in the boiling water. And and then you have, there's onions that you like, you know, fry in a certain way. I'm not mm -hmm. going to go into the whole, but with paprika. And then the cheese is Emmentaler. So it's Emmentaler cheese. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it's kind of like a Swiss cheese, but it's Emmentaler. They also use back Kesa, which isn't, you can't really get that much here. So Emmentaler is great. And then it's okay. usually served with a nice salad. Um, Ooh. So yeah, with a Wonderful. nice big mixed salad, whatever you like. And we are dressing is a little differently, but you know, you can do whatever kind of dressing you want, but it's the Kesa Spätzle with the onions. And then on the side, there's a big, nice salad. Oh, that sounds yummy. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. And we will put that in our notes so everybody can read that recipe and make it themselves. Sounds good. It's not hard to make either. It's really not. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I consider myself a mac and cheese connoisseur, so I may have to try this. I've <laughs> yes, yes. I'd love I've, some feedback. <laughs> yes, spent decades perfecting my taste of mac and cheese, and this yes. just sounds really, really tasty. So good. Yes. Awesome. I definitely grew up on mac and cheese for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much. It sounds yummy, and I'll have to make it this weekend. Wonderful. Let me know awesome. how it turns out. I will. I will. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed trotting along with us and discovering new destination on horseback. To learn more about the Equestrian Travel Association and the guide that lists all our wonderful vacations, you can visit us at www.rideeta.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Equestrian Travel, and Instagram and TikTok at Equestrian Travel. Well, until next time, saddle up, explore the world, and may your travels be filled with hooves and happiness.